Okay, perfect. So uh, welcome everyone. Um, this is Cesar Tatabanco from the Global Chamber. I think most of you uh, know me already. Um, this is our monthly global dining slash food tour, beverage tour that we do um, around the world. And this time uh, we picked on tequila and mezcal. And uh, there's, a, there's a reason behind that. And, and so the reason is that I personally gonna be drinking mezcal with Enrique in, in a couple of days. And so Sam, and Sam is gonna be um, sponsoring our event in Mexico City with some tequila in one week. So so I say, you know, you, you both are helping me with, with a couple of things in Mexico. So let's just have you put it in front of some of our members and people in the US. And I see Jacob moving his head. Jacob is ready for some tequila. <laughs> so, so the whole idea, I'm gonna just mute, hold on a second, just mute a little bit. And I want to welcome Luis. Luis Miranda is a new member from Guadalajara. So Luis probably knows a lot about tequila as well. And, and we'll probably hear from you later on, Luis. Um, so I want to start with Sam, Samuel Santiago. Um, he's a member of the Global Chamber based in Mexico City. And he's part of a group that's managing a new brand that is called Tequila Mil Demonios. And so Sam, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you and leave you translate that and explain more about the, the, the tequila, about the brand, and and anything overall about the product. So welcome, Sam. And I, I think we have um, Sandra as well working with you, right? That's right. She's right here. She's waving right now. So yeah, we'll we'll get into that in a few seconds. So good afternoon. Buenas tardes. It's literally lunchtime in Mexico, so it couldn't be any more appropriate, uh, at least within this time zone, to share a little bit about tequila and, and the significance of tequila, in particular, you know, this one here that I will be sharing this uh, with you today. Before we do that, I want to thank uh, Cesar and Doug for giving us the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing here. Uh, we're doing more than just tequila. Today, we're going to talk about tequila. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about who I am and, and what we do here in just uh, in just a few more seconds. Uh, but we're excited to, to be part of this conversation today and to share uh, a little bit of what's been going on. And more than anything else, to share the culture of Mexico from a slightly different perspective. I think that many of us think about our younger years and whether you drank back then or you didn't. You probably, if you didn't do it yourself, you heard of stories about getting drunk on tequila, you know, on the beaches of Cancun or Cabos or, you know, whatever you, you were at the time. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but the reality is that tequila is so much more than that. It's so much more sophisticated than just getting drunk on a beach and then, you know, forgetting about what you did last night. And that's what we're hoping, you know, to have an opportunity to share with you today. Before we do that, let me uh, go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Sam Santiago, as uh, Cesar mentioned. I am originally from Puerto Rico, born and raised on the island, spent a little bit of uh, my professional life in uh, Canada, in Edmonton. Most of my professional life in my adult years, 25 years of my life in Dallas, Texas, working for uh, big global brands like American Airlines, the American Heart Association, uh, Hilton Worldwide, Hilton Hotels, and a number of other uh, big name organizations uh, that really quenched my thirst for being a global citizen. So between the opportunity to stay at hotels for a reduced rate and traveling on American Airlines at a reduced, uh, reduced rate, um, and I've had the opportunity to travel to nearly 400 cities in 54 countries, and that's why uh, being part of the Global Chamber is something that really resonates with me. I've been connected uh, with the Chamber for a few years, uh, had the opportunity to support a little bit uh, Karina, when, Karina when she was in Dallas, and then eventually Nelson, and now recently uh, a few changes have been announced. That was all while I was living in Dallas. I've been in Mexico now for about two years. Um, I fell in love, got married uh, while on holiday a couple of years ago. And uh, my husband, who's originally from Jalisco, which is a state where tequila comes from, um, has been in the logistics, international trade, ground transportation, security, 
um, digital marketing and a number of other businesses uh, for a long time. So it was time for me to leave behind yet another safe space and move on to a new adventure. And that's what I've been doing here for the last two years, investing in our businesses and developing what is now Grupo Santoviano. So I'm one of the founding partners and chief administrative officer. And having said that, I would like to mention that Sandra Vega is with us today. Say hello, Sandra, please. Hi, everyone. I'm here in Manzanillo. Excellent. So Manzanillo is where I first landed, and I had the opportunity to meet Sandra in Colima. Sandra has recently joined Tequila Mil Demonios as the new administrator. So we're very excited about her arrival. Uh, she's literally day seven of her adventure with Tequila Mil Demonios. So glad to have you with us again, uh, Sandra. So let me tell you a little bit before we get into the really good stuff, right? Because I, I want to build up a little anticipation. I want to um, get you a little thirsty for tequila. Um, I, I, I have to confess, I am not the utmost expert on the matter, right? So there are going to be a few things that I'm going to share with you. And I know for a fact, I know them. But then there are going to be a few of the things that I probably won't have an answer for. But that's the beauty of doing what we do, right? Sometimes we just get a little adventurous. And we just get into business ventures that we know we just have that feeling, that gut feel that it's going to work out. Um, and of course, you know, with my husband being from that part of the country, and one of our first dates was actually going to Tequila, the town of Tequila, that gives the name to the spirit, and drinking tequila in three days more than I probably had drank in my whole entire life before then, I quickly developed a taste for this delicious, um, it's, 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 it's the liquor, it's the spirit of the, of the gods. So uh, our story, let me tell you a little bit about Tequila Mil Demonios and Cesar, if you could uh, please support me with displaying the presentation on the screen. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but you don't have to see my face the whole time. So when we talk about Tequila Mil Demonios, we talk about more than just a beverage, it's really a celebration of the Mexican culture. And that's a little bit of what I shared with you, the culture and the tradition. So a lot of people know about mariachis, right? Like the big band with the big hats and they have you know, trumpets and saxophones and they have guitars and, and, and bass and, and, and all kinds of beautiful musical instruments and the charro, right? So sort of the Western uh, Pacific Ocean version of the cowboy in, in Mexico. Uh, with the beautiful dancing horses. And, and part of what I think it's that threesome, right, or that trio is tequila. The tequila comes from the land of uh, Jalisco, uh, Jalisco, Mexico, which is located, it's a state located on the western part of the country. And it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the country filled with uh, contrast and, and delicious products, right? Um, and when we talk about Mil Demonios, it really symbolizes passion, it symbolizes courage and strength in the Mexican culture and, and our essential part of it, the history of Mexico and the brand that we're, that we're developing and that we're putting out here in really in just a few more weeks, uh, we will be doing the official launch. So what we have done is that we, we have focused on creating an authentic and high quality tequila uh, from the selection of the agaves to the distillation in copper steels and aging in oak barrels, every step is carried out with dedication and care to ensure an exceptional flavor. As you probably know, there are tons of tequilas out there, tons of, of this delicious product out there. Some of the tequila you'll find is really good. Some of it, it's not as good. Maybe it does have a very high alcohol content. And if that's what you're looking for, you know, go for it, enjoy it. But if you're really looking to enjoy a delicious, refined, classy spirit, then um, you want to get a product like Tequila Mil Demonios. Uh, Tequila Mil Demonios you know, has a mission, and moving on to the next slide. And that mission is to be really focused on the sale of Blanco Tequila or Plata Tequila, also known in English as silver, uh, with the aim of meeting the needs of tequila customers and consumers worldwide to really reach those tequila connoisseurs um, who we definitely wanna make sure they taste this delicious product. Within Mexico, first of all, 
We aim to establish a strong presence in segments and categories that increase the brand and company's values. And in fact, we have a few objectives that we're happy to share with you. We want to increase the number of customers and build loyalty throughout marketing and positioning strategies. We want to obtain more certifications and ex to expand and enhance existing services. And when we talk about certifications here, even more permits and opportunities to continue to expand to other products under the uh, Tequila Mil Demonios brand. We want to achieve better agreements with uh, strategic partners, and we want to develop our employees in uh, personal, professional, and human aspects. But more than anything else, we want to make sure that we have a product that is really delicious and that people are really going to enjoy it. Whether you know how to drink tequila, whether you're a true connoisseur, or you're getting started on enjoying this delicious spirit, we want to make sure that this is the tequila uh, for you. One of the things you're going to find about Tequila Mil Demonios is that the work that, that we do is really artisanal. And I know, I know that we throw that word around a lot, you know, particularly when we talk about products coming from other countries, sometimes, as we say in America, exotic countries, right? But the reality is that this is truly an artisanal product. As we move on, move on to the next slide, Cesar, please. There are a few pieces of information here you're going to find very interesting about Tequila Mil Demonios. Number one, we rely on superior quality. Tequila Mil Demonios takes pride in using only the highest quality agave, hand harvested, and employing artisanal distillation methods. And I'm going to um, pause here for just a moment and emphasize the fact that oh, I, I see. Know, <laughs> Well, you probably know uh, brands like Cuervo, Radura, and others uh, that are very popular, that have been in the market for a long time. They are no, no shade, but they are truly commercial products. They're not considered by the Tequila Council in Mexico an artisanal product. And how does that happen? Well, it happens in many ways, uh, many times because they have additives that are aggregated or added into the mix. Uh, they may have uh, sugars or sugar compounds uh, that are added. They may have flavoring, they may have coloring. And in the case of uh, most of the really big brands that are putting out you know, these millions and millions of liters of uh, tequila uh, a year, they are uh, products that use a younger agave plant from which you really don't have the ability to get the best product, the most delicious product, the most naturally sweet and smooth product. So if you find that a tequila is excessively bitter, or if you find that a tequila it really just lights up a fire down your esophagus, that is not really good high quality tequila because tequila is not supposed to do that. Another thing that is important for us is sustainability. We're committed to protecting the environment and we work with local communities to implement sustainable production practices and supporting local farmers. So we know the owner of the agave plant that owns the land, David, and David and his children, three boys and one girl, and they're all involved in the business and they put into practice the best that they can do to do proper land management and proper waste disposal, which with tequila, there's really not a whole lot of that going on uh, because the 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 gabazo, right, or what it's left over of the uh, tequila, what we call piña, right, or the or the pineapple looking part of the uh, of the agave, which is actually what is used to distill uh, and create tequila. All of that, every step of the way, all of that is treated in a eco-friendly way. Uh, another thing that is an important value for us is the Mexican tradition. Tequila Mil Demonios adheres to traditional production methods. We talked a little bit about that and, and it honors the authenticity of Mexican tequila culture. And then at the, at the end of this um, display here, um, we talk about innovation. So while maintaining a traditional foundation, the brand consistently seeks new ways to introduce tequila to consumers 
through innovative and creative communication strategies. And this is where we thought we would deviate a little bit from a traditional tequila tasting presentation. Well, number one, we're deviating from it, right? Because it's virtual. Unfortunately, you're not gonna have an opportunity to taste it yet, but you will, and we'll tell you how in just a moment. Uh, but uh, we're, we're gonna share with you a couple of the things that are just very interesting here in just a moment. Um, Cesar, in fact, we're ready to move on to the next uh, slide. So this is a description or specification uh, uh, sheet or spec sheet, and um, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but this the, the product that we're launching the brand with is a clear crystalline um, uh, type of tequila. It, again, it's called plata or silver, and it has really soft aromas. It really, it's, it's a lot smoother than you're going to find most tequilas to be out there. I'm not sure exactly where this idea that tequila has to burn its way down to your stomach uh, came from, uh, but that's not what you're going to find with tequila mil demonios. The current presentation is 750 milliliters. It comes 100% uh, from uh, blue agave. And a very interesting piece of information is that you're going to find that a lot of spirits in Mexico can be sold as um, if you want to call it heart liquor, I believe it would be, you know, the best way to de describe it in America um, at 35%. Um, we know that in the United States, it's at least 40% or higher. Um, but here in Mexico, it can be uh, sold and it is approved by the Tequila Council to be sold at 35%. Um, the rest of the information is self-explanatory. I'm not going to bore you, you know, reading uh, through something that you can read yourself. Uh, but the most important uh, thing that you're going to find here, it's at the very uh, bottom of this uh, slide, is that a variety of agave uh, tequilas or, or, or plants actually are used uh, to create this tequila, to distill this tequila. These plants take six to eight years to mature. And that's why Tequila Mil Demonios is very different from many other products out there. There are other artisanal tequilas out there. I'm not going to say we're the only ones, but that's one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons why Tequila Mil Demonios, we're so excited about this product because it really represents uh, the culture of Mexico and it represents a product that 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 it, 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 it's Mexico. It really is Mexico. And it's not um, it's not rushed in its production. Uh, thereby changing the nature of, of what tequila was, you know, hundreds of years ago. In fact, thousands of years ago, as history and, and culture indicates, uh, there was a version of tequila here before the arrival of the Spanish con uh, conquistadors. And um, it was just um, really developed as a commercial product with the arrival of the Europeans. So moving on to what I believe is going to really catch your attention. If we move on to the next slide, that's right, uh, growing industry. So again, I'm not going to read through everything, but a few highlights of uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, the industry has experienced an average annual, annual growth of 5% over the last 10 years. Uh, there is a global tequila market and it's estimated to be worth about $10 billion with a B and a growth of even more than that 5% uh, that it's been growing on over the last 10 years. More than 70% of tequila exports originate from Mexico, uh, which is a leading producer worldwide. It can only be called tequila if it comes from the state of Jalisco, specifically if it comes from the region of tequila, you know, the town of tequila, where a lot of these lands grow the, the right agave and Amatitan and other smaller towns around tequila. Um, it can be called tequila if it comes from uh, somewhere else. It can be called an agave uh, liquor, an agave spirit. It can be called an agave, whatever you want to call it, but it cannot be called tequila. It's very similar to 
the denomination uh, of um, champagne, right, in, in France. Uh, premium tequila segment specifically has grown a lot, 15% over the last five years, and it now represents 30% of the uh, market. Um, investment in sustainable tequila production has increased by 25%. Uh, we're very excited about that because we're part of that sustainable tequila production uh, movement uh, with these eco-friendly practices uh, that I briefly mentioned a minute ago. And tequila exports to the United States have grown 10% annually in the last decade, accounting for 80% of total exports in uh, Mexican spirits. And as we move on to the next uh, slide, uh, we are almost to the end. We'll get to the good stuff here in just a moment. Uh, these are some of the statistics. Uh, over the past years, uh, tequila exports from Mexico has shown consistent, uh, consistent growth, starting at 64.6 64 million liters in 95 to 339.4 million liters in 21. In that year, the primary destination for the agave Bay spirit, we call tequila, was the United States, accounting for approximately 89% of the uh, exports. The market has now expanded to Europe, where there is a rush to taste, you know, this this tequila agave spirit um, that was not as very well known in Europe before. Uh, probably if you've had the opportunity to travel around a little bit, uh, lots of whiskey, gin, even rum, uh, marketed mainly as Cuban rum uh, for the uh, for the last few decades, maybe Jamaican rum as well. Uh, particularly in the UK, uh, but tequila is absolutely taking over uh, bars and, and other similar establishments in Europe. Same thing in Asia. I think that the, that the years of whiskey being the supreme reigning queen of, of spirits are uh, soon over. I am a whiskey lover, uh, but once I fell in love with tequila, I just, you know, you can't be a slave to two masters. So I much rather stick with tequila now. And then moving on to the last slide of our presentation today. We have a marketing plan. We thought that the business people on this call would be interested in learning a little bit more about that. The company's marketing team uh, has developed a promotional campaign. Um, we invite you to follow us on Instagram. Uh, probably the best sampling of you know videos and and other designs that are just absolutely fantastic. They're very inspiring. They're mainly in Spanish right now, so we don't have a lot going on in English. We're launching in Mexico, and hopefully by the end of the year, then we'll move on to to the U.S. Uh, but for now, you're going to find uh, the best of the best in, in marketing, particularly digital marketing, obviously, um, on Instagram. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that we have those face-to-face -face, uh, deals with local entrepreneurs. That's the most important part of what we want to do because it is artisanal. We want to make sure that, that it feels real. Um, events with opinion leaders or influencers, as we call them now, uh, initially uh, domestically or nationally and then internationally, featuring professional mixologists. We're very excited, for example, about a uh, tasting that we have going on. It will be paired up with Mexican food that has been prepared in Tequila Mil Demonios. That's gonna be happening in Mexico City, October 21st. If you want more information, we wanna come for that. You know, happy to share the invitation. Um, we're looking for collaborations in specialized magazines. Publicity, as we know, it's really important. Uh, so we can showcase not only tequila, but this lifestyle that comes with it and the experiences, right, that, that, that happen around the consumption of tequila. And then, of course, you know, we're looking forward to participating in which we've done already, you know, over the last uh, year, uh, but in fairs, uh, more tastings and specialized beverage events. So with that, I'd like to pause because I'm leaving the best for last. Uh, but I'd like to open it up for questions or comments or reactions. I've seen a lot of uh, comments here on in the chat. I don't know that I've had an opportunity. Are there recipes beyond margaritas? Yes, 
There are tons of recipes beyond margaritas. Uh, Cesar, is it okay if I just go ahead and address the questions from? from That's, the I was I was going to suggest that. Make okay, sure perfect. Let's do that. So, there, there are a couple. Okay. There are a couple of questions there. So yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Sure. Okay. Well, let's let's jump right into it because I don't want anybody to leave without. Uh, getting their, their questions answered. So uh, yes, there are tons of recipes beyond margaritas. Um, probably one of my favorite is Paloma and it's it's really tequila and uh, mineral water or sparkling wa water. So if you're watching the calories, but you still want to, you know, you want to get happy, then uh, definitely you can try that. And I'm sure that you can find all kinds of uh, uh, recipes on the internet. Uh, part of our promotions and all of that good stuff, we'll be promoting um, other um, other recipes. So you're going to be seeing some of that. Um, where will tequila mil de be available in the U.S.? Excellent question, Mitch. The tequila mil de we have here now in Mexico will be distributed in the United States under the name Sariel, S-A-R-I-E-L. We didn't get the right to distribute it under the name Mil Demonios. It was already registered to another product, uh, but it will be developed, uh, I'm sorry, distributed under the name Sariel. So be on the lookout. In fact, let me just type it here because I can multitask Tequila Sariel. So that's uh, really good stuff um, that will be coming to the market uh, here really, really soon. I think that I lost track of the uh, thread. Uh, love the pun, blah, blah, blah. Greetings, Robert. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I don't know if maybe Cesar, and, you can, and because if I was anyone, going in the order ahead then, but then I typed. If anyone wants to jump and ask a question, feel free to as well. Okay. I saw, yes. I saw something about the, um, what's the difference, what's Añejo? And and what was the agave used for tequila? I think I, I saw that one coming from Chris. Yeah, so the agave the agave used for our like, tequila is blue agave. There are different versions of, of agave uh that, that are used for the product or other products that are based on agave, but but they're not tequila, right? We already talked about that. It has to be from the tequila region uh in order for it to be uh called uh tequila. And uh the añejo, well, just like most other spirits. They're aged. So literally, añejo means aged. So there are different versions of that. And the, and the añejo and the reposado are two different versions uh, that only vary in the length of time and how they are aged. Um, we don't have those products. We don't have the reposado and the añejo yet. So we won't be talking about those two uh, different types of uh, tequilas. Uh, we only have, as we mentioned, the... Um, uh, plata or silver, uh, which is what the experts say is the purest form of tequila, right? Because at the end of the day, when you age it, then it goes through a further um, uh, um, process, right? Uh, where, where it's fermented even more. And then of course, if it's aged even longer in the oak barrels, as I shared with you in the presentation earlier, then of course it takes in, you know, the the, the flavors of the oak and the flavors from, from the wooden barrels. Um, and then I think that in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, answer one last question. Are there any health benefits for tequila? The experts say, and it's not because it's our tequila brand, uh, but it is the healthiest uh, spirit out there. It contains the least amount of additives and in its purest form, which is, you know, the silver version, um, it really is good for, um, for blood pressure and it's good for, um, I've even heard stories that it's good for, for colds and, you know, I'm, I'm not in the health industry, uh, but there are uh, some amazing uh, health benefits if consumed in moderation, right? With that, Cesar, I think that we have to move on, right, to the last few minutes of what we have for you, because we have yep. two very important pieces of information to share with you. Number one, uh, when you consume tequila, you can do it the way that probably most of us learned how to do it when we were younger, or we've seen in movies, or we heard about, right? I get the feeling that if you're here today, you probably did it yourself. You wouldn't be part of a conversation about tequila if you didn't enjoy a few shots, you know, in your younger years, or maybe even in your older years, right? Uh, 
But there are two ways of, of doing this. So you've probably seen method number one. So let's get to it. Let me just show you what I have here. I have a little dish or plate here. Uh, the white stuff you can't see here, it's salt. Um, in Mexico, they consume salt in a larger grain, right? Uh, but I'm gonna use just the regular salt here. And then um, lemon. So the difference here in Mexico is that the smaller green uh, citrus fruit that we call lime in America is what's called lemon in Mexico. Are you taking note of all of this? Because I don't want you to come to Mexico and be all confused about, oh, I want lime. Well, if you ask for lime or lima, they're going to give you a completely different fruit. So <laughs> I don't want you to be consuming Mexico with the, with, with the fruit that it's not supposed to be consumed with. So what happens is the following, and I'm sure you've seen this before. So you kind of wet between your thumb and your index a little bit, and then you pour the salt, right? And hopefully you see some of that here. Let me get a little bit closer. And that is what you're going to start with. And you're going to just lick it. It's not very classy to do that in public. But when you're in the right environment and it's not a Zoom meeting, then I'm sure it's a lot of fun. And then you go ahead and you pour your tequila in a shot glass. This is um, more than the typical one ounce, one, one and a half ounce um, shot uh, that they will give you out there. There are all kinds of different sizes, you know, depending on what kind of bar you go to or what kind of establishment you go to. But for the purposes of these presentation i'm just going to pour a little bit right i don't need to be drunk in the middle of the afternoon i haven't even had lunch yet <laughs> i'm i'm gonna knock it back it's not the best way to do it not the best way to enjoy it but if you want to have a little bit of fun then why not right who am i to judge you so you knock it back salute And then you suck on the lemon. What I have yet to understand exactly why you do that, but we'll figure that out when we go into the next presentation, okay? So come back for more tips on how to consume tequila. So I'm gonna taste it with a little bit of water. But what I would like to share with you it's a way that you're going to find tequila will be presented to you in tequila tastings, maybe in a classier environment, right? Again, we're not judging anybody, but if you really want to enjoy it, they will provide you with a flight, silver or blanco or plata, right? Then añejo and then reposado, at least those three. And then they're probably going to give you um, a tequila, a flavored tequila, so it could be it could be peanuts, uh, it could be chocolate, it could be all kinds of different ones. There are all kinds of uh, different delicious flavors now. Uh, but what you're going to find is that the purist will consume it the following way. Well, first of all, it is poured into a brandy or cognac glass. Why? Because the wider opening will allow it to air right? It will allow it to breathe a little bit. And just like any spirit, it needs to breathe a little bit. And then you know that it's really good tequila because when you pour it, right? And then you swirl it, these quote unquote greasy stains will stick around the glass. So you swirl, you swirl, you swirl. And if it doesn't stick and then slides down, then it's not good because agave has natural um, oils that will be part of the tequila you're consuming, very healthy oils. Um, if it's aged or if it's reposado or if it's not mixed with any other flavoring, then it's just not going to work out. Um, it, it's not as good quality. It's not bad, but it's not as good quality. And then what's going to happen is that just like with any other spirit, you know, take your time to smell, to enjoy it and get your nose, which is really, you know, where you get your flavor from, right? It's not your tongue, you get it from your nose. It's a combination of your nose and your tongue. Um, get, it, get, get yourself some time, give yourself some time, right? To smell it a little bit, to really enjoy that. 
because it's sort of a preparation for what your taste buds will enjoy. So what happens is you don't knock this back, right? You just take a little sip. And what I just did there was to take a sip, not knock it, I didn't knock it down, I knock it back. You take a sip, you swirl a little bit in your mouth, then you swallow, and then you exhale because it gives you the ability to get rid of some of the, the, the heaviness of the alcohol. And although tequila mil demonios is very smooth, very suave, as we would say in Spanish, um, it does help, right, to exhale and get rid of some of that alcohol that may burn its way down to your stomach, down your esophagus. So with that, uh, that's all I have for you. Uh, that's all the information that I have time to share with you. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, and through Cesar, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put my, my email here um, as well in the chat as we have another presentation. I'll be more than happy to share more information with you about distribution, investments, uh, and, and on the brand. Um, we're doing that through blockchain and tokens. So I'm just going to teach you there a little bit because we are the only tequila brand that is doing that uh, anywhere in the world, obviously Mexico. Uh, so very excited about that innovation and mix of innovation and traditional cultures that we're trying to promote here in Tequila Mil Demonios. Thank you very much, Sam. And I invite you to add all your social media um links and and your website and your contact details in the chat and feel free to go through the chat and and try to reply to any of the pending questions i i i there was one from gloria about the food pairing with tequila and and there was one one from jacob about the uh a process for for the land but, but you can you can you can take a look that that I want to be respectful of the next conversation but i'll i, I can multitask so i'll listen and answer sounds good sounds good and so um Enrique, are you still there? Let's see. Yes, yes, I'm here, ready. Okay, Enrique. So Enrique Cantu is our global advisor for Oaxaca, Mexico. And, and Oaxaca is the land of mezcal, that famous cousin of tequila. So Enrique, is right now you're in a, in a mezcaleria, right? Yes, I am in a mezcaleria. The Mezcaleria of Destileria Tlacolula, Tlacolula Distillery, and ready, ready to roll. All yours, Enrique. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So, welcome everybody, welcome to Oaxaca, and welcome to La Mezcaleria uh, from uh, Destileria Tlacolula, Tlacolula Distillery. Uh, I want to take a, a minute before introducing you to Javier, our mezcalier today to tell you a little bit about Mezcal and Oaxaca. Uh, Oaxaca is a very rich state. It is the southernmost state in Mexico. And we, we are very rich in culture, gastronomy. And of course, as Cesar said, we are the land of Mezcal. In Oaxaca, we produce around 14 million liters of Mezcal a year, eight, uh, eight of which uh, they go to, to exports mainly to the U.S., but we have presence in 65 plus countries. Uh, so let me make you an invitation to everybody here before, before handing it out to Javier. Uh, come to Oaxaca. Cesar, Doc, let's make a field trip or a convention here in Oaxaca for next year. We can organize it. And in the meantime, uh, salute with mezcal. We drink mezcal by kissing the glass, little kisses, and until we see the cross. There's a little cross in, at the bottom of, of, the, of the base. So that's the, the fashion we drink mezcal. And without uh, any further, uh, I introduce you to my friend Javier, who is connected as Eric right now. And um, please Javier, take it away. Hello, everybody. Um, and uh, so finally, 
So today we have the opportunity to tell about our brand. We have uh, Maria and Misty. So that hears very well. You hear me? Yes, all good, all good. Okay, so uh, so the city of La Palula, you know, we have more than a hundred uh, years from history. We are the first uh, certified brand that we, we make a mezcal. We make uh, mezcal from agaves and multiple species. So we have uh, basically, today we will talk about two specific brands, Maria and Mystic. So Maria, we, which we have Joven or Blanco, and then we have Reposado, and also we have Añejo. And in the, uh, in the Mystic side, we have uh, Mystic Jukut Steel, and also we have another wild species. So in Oaxaca, we have different agaves, uh, agaves that we we came from the different different altitude, different regions, different microsystem. So those agaves they have a specific um, smells and notes and expressions. So we are very uh, from uh, 1920 we have the we making mezcal. Have more than a hundred years making mezcal. We are the first brand to get certified. We have the zero one, and also. Uh, we export, we have the whole chain, we ex the whole chain of production. We export uh, to the United States, we export to Europe, we, we export to Germany. And uh, yeah, so we'll talk about the, the mezcal. And first of all, what is mezcal? So mezcal is an agave spirit that we can make from from, uh, from agaves. So the difference between all the tequila and, and mezcal is uh, mezcal has the opportunity to uh, we can use different agave species, and obviously that the, we can make in a, a specific um, states in Mexico. We are we are nine now, right now, mm -hmm. and uh, so here in Oaxaca we are the capital of mezcal. So now the, the, the mezcal has a lot of uh, it has been growing very very fast. I think around the world, and it's like a it's a, the new agave spirit that. The, the world is taking, you know, taking care, take advantage of a lot of uh, uh, benefits that they have, you know, can be in the gastronomy and the cocktail, and also obviously in the, in the, in the business. So, so we'll talk about the, the, the Maria. So the Maria is uh, Blanco. So this uh, is mezcal, it's 40% uh, alcohol. And then, so we use the traditional method. So we, we use, uh, Conic peat oven, and then we grinding in a taona, which is uh, is a, a stone, is 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 uh, pulling by horse, and then we have uh, reposado. So this reposado we use American and French oak, and as mean the the norm says we can use from uh, um, two months minimum and twelve months maximum, and then we have añejo, which is aged. This age we uh, we can. We can storage in a cask from a 12 months minimum. In this case, for Maria, we do uh, two years. Okay, this is the Maria Maria family. And then we have the mystique. So from this mystique, we do, um, we have the wild uh, agaves. So we start with this, uh, with this uh, espadin, so which is straight with the steel. And so this is uh, it's very it's very smooth. So we make this a mezcal for basically for those sensitive palates that you know they have uh, there. In the world, sometimes uh, at the beginning the mezcal were were a little strong. So the people there they say, oh, we need something more smooth, something more uh, great that we can understand, we can feel the agave, the agave flavors, but. With a uh, in, in, in smooth sense that we have the spodentry to put the steel, and then we have another wild agaves like a tobala, we have a pepestate, we have barril, we have arroqueño, we have also uh mexicano. So, for those uh wild agaves, we, we make those small batches, so because the agaves they're like more hard to find, and the every agave, the wild agave, they have. Uh, less content of sugar. That's why we need like, more kilos for make a single bottle of, of mezcal, mezcal. And so in the city at La Colula, we have a, we said we are a family uh, distillery and we, uh, 
we do we have the whole chains and the greenhouse we have the uh, distillery we do barreling we do everything we have a lot of you know the sustainable sustainability we don't we don't draw out of yeast we have a, a specific uh, process you know to take care of the of the like the details you know of the after the stealing and so we are very we're very happy you know to uh to invite you to the whole group of uh global champion uh, cha cha uh, sorry, uh, chamber group so we'll be very happy to have you to wish you to have all of all of you here in, in oaxaca to discover um the side of mezcal also the big customer that we have and um yeah so that is a little bit of, of mezcal so uh the mezcal mostly we do for sipping but also we have um uh, in the last years the mezcal has been taken a lot of advantage in, in the cocktail in the cocktail uh, you know mixology uh, area and so you are very uh, invited uh, to come to Oaxaca and to see you know the whole process that we have and it's very uh, very very artisanal so we have we make or or mezcals they are uh, artisanal is like the category of uh, artisanal mezcal and so we'll be very happy to take it, to have you here and uh, take care of you and to show you what what is the, the magic behind of every single bottle. So every bottle is a hand, a handcraft. So we have, you know, in, in the in our distillery, we, we work more than seven ethnic uh, groups, which uh, some people, they where they speak uh, Zapotec, there's people, they speak uh, Mije, I speak, uh, inside of a little English, I speak uh, Nahuatl, and then uh, we can take as well. So we, we are a very uh, rich uh, group in the, in the distillery. So we also, the women, you know, they're very, very uh, hard workers as well. So we will be very happy to have you here in Oaxaca and to show you about our Bye. distillery, about our mezcal, about our state. And uh, yeah, and, you know, uh, I would like to Bye. take care of the of you, uh, Cesar and Global Champion. If you have Excellent. any questions. Oh, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Yes. And yes, there, there are a couple of questions there. To, I would like to add just one thing. Uh, okay. Let me let me um Eric, let me just let me just mute Eric and and unmute you because I think we... try to unmute yourself now, Enrique. Okay. okay. Uh, Congratulations, uh, first of all, to Samuel for his presentation of Tequila Mil Demonios. I just wanted to, to, add, to add that. that. Uh, we're open to questions. So then the main question I have here, sorry, let me just mute um, Eric. Okay, I think it should be all set. The main question is, what's the difference between Tequila and Mezcal? You say the difference between Tequila and Mezcal is... Yes. Okay, so the first thing is the origin, the, the, the origin, uh, the rumination. For example, like the like champagne and you know and, and prosecco. So the difference between tequila, first of all, is um, the original, the origin, the rumination. The second maybe the for tequila they have a uh, blue agave, and for mezcal we have more than more than twenty different kinds of of agaves. And the other thing could be the process. So mezcal, it's a, come from Nahuatl, that, that means cooked agave, roasted. So the agave should be roasted on the ground. That's why it, it makes a little like smoky, you know, particular thing that the people identify, you know, the, very quick. And the other thing probably it's like a, the, the percentage of, of, of uh, alcohol. So in, in uh, mezcal, we, we can bottle from 35% alcohol through 55%. But at the end of the day, so we are agave spirits, and you know the the, the mezcal is you know now it's uh, the new thing. It's it's coming up in worldwide, so we have the opportunity to uh, you know open mezcalerias in New York City and also Germany. So you know the mezcal it's it's uh, you know the star uh, the people they liked in a, in a cocktail and also you know the different uh, in gastronomy like you know in, in different dishes, in different chefs. That we work with, you know, they're very happy to to try our our, our product. So, and Eric, thank you, Eric. They're asking also about the warm, 
the famous oh. word, but I haven't seen that in, in most recent mezcal bottles. <laughs> what's the what's the story behind that? Okay, so that's very interesting. You know, actually, maybe at the beginning, uh, the first one that they start, uh, you know, to identify the the, mez the mezcal, they 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 have like a, in the barrel with with more. But uh, now, you know, with you know, now we have different um, uh, like uh, how do we say like politics. You know, for example, like we have now, we have the the vegetarian people. You know, the vegan they don't like worms, so. So now it's and um, some other some countries they don't uh, accept the any like any bottle with any like organic thing no worm, so the 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 worm it grows in the agave only eats agave and it's a particular mesc, uh, particular aroma that uh, is optional to put in a bottle but not necessary, so that's why in the in the agave mezcal classes the mezcal we have with blanco reposado añejo avocado which is flavored with and that is uh, uh, we include the uh, usano or worm uh, mezcal and then we have the steel with and or flavored with so so now it's, you you don't see like too many too many brands with with worm but if you i mean we have also we have one maria with with, with, with gusano what, uh, but with no worm, just uh, the essence of the worm. Yeah, this option, you know, somebody, many people they like, you know, because in the history in, in Mexico, I uh, remember from Mexico City, you know, like the to south, uh, part of the, our cultures, we eat uh, different insects like um, uh, grasshoppers, uh, chicatanas, it's like the ants, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's been part of our culture, you know, which maybe for the new new countries they, or new cities, they don't, um, maybe they don't like as much, but uh, the worm has been part of the, of the culture or gastronomy as well. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Eric. I think we need to, to start wrapping up and I would like to start with Enrique. Enrique, if you can say a few last words and then we move back to Sam, Um, that, that would be great. Eric, will I see you next week? Yeah, yeah, I would like to. I would like to have you here, and you know, we, you will like, you will love uh, uh, Oaxaca. Trust me, and and the whole group of Global Chamber, uh, you are very, very, very invited to Oaxaca, and we have lots of mezcal, and I think uh, a mezcal is waiting for you. You know, we say that the mezcal chooses you. No, chooses you. Really good. <laughs> Excellent. So thanks, Eric. Um, thank Eric, you. Thank you to you, and hope. Uh, I will, I will. En Enrique, a couple of last words from you. Uh, yes, thank you everybody for watching our presentations. Congratulations, Samuel. Thank you, Cesar, for the opportunity and we'll see you this Friday. Everyone, I see. everybody is invited to Oaxaca. I see you on Friday, Enrique. Thank you. And, and Sam. Um, Cheers. Actually, cheers. And if someone someone knows what what presidente means or what presidente is, they have an extra bonus. So, um, Sam, last word from you. Thank you, Cesar. Thank you again to Global Chamber for giving us the opportunity to tell you a little bit about our our great product. We're super excited about it. Uh, unlike others who have a well developed product here, Enrique, lovely to hear and learn about uh, your mezcal. And I can go to Oaxaca this weekend. I'm gonna be in uh, Cuernavaca and then on to Merida uh, for the weekend, uh, but we'll, we'll find the time. I, I went to Oaxaca on my honeymoon and absolutely loved it, loved it. And I was just back there about two months ago. So yes, I fell in love with Oaxaca. And, um, and, and I encourage you to more than anything else, uh, now, getting to the business of the Global Chamber, I encourage you to participate, to engage, to be part of the meetings, to to engage in social media, LinkedIn, whatever that may be, um, and to really bring others to participate. And, and if this event on October 3rd that will take place here in Mexico City at uh, four in the afternoon, you know, it's that um, opportunity to to get people to learn more about the Global Chamber 
then please do so. You know, just send them a little note, let them know that we're here, that we're going to be here, that we're going to be talking about Global Chamber. We're going to have another tasting. So if nothing else, hopefully the alcohol will bring them in. And then the good <laughs> stuff that the Global Chamber is doing will keep them in. And um, excited to be part of these, you know, global tribe, as Doug uh, calls it. And looking forward to meeting many of you in person. So hop on over, you know, at least for me from Dallas is a two hour flight. I know some of you are not as close, but if you have the ability to do that, or if you're interested in anything else having to do with what Grupo San Cobian is doing um, in logistics and ground transportation and security, digital marketing and uh, hospitality and a few other things that we're doing, please um, reach out to me, happy to do so. And thank you, Sandra, for joining me this afternoon uh, we're we're learning together, so <laughs> this thank is you. very exciting. Thank you, Sam, and thank you for mentioning about the event. I just dropped the link of the event we're having on Tuesday in Mexico City. As as Sam said, you know, if, if you know someone in Mexico City, send the link and and send it over to us, and, and we're happy to host them and and you know get them some tequila as well. Um, I I, I would like to really end this conversation by showing there's there's another cousin to the tequila and the mezcal. And I, I think it is, it is unfair for, for us, the Global Chamber, not mentioning what Bacanora is. Um, Bacanora is, is a similar um, spirit that is processed in nor Northern Mexico, Northern West Mexico, uh, specifically in Sonora. And, and the, reason, the reason why I bring this up is because Christian Aguirre, our executive director in Sonora, He's been working with this brand that's Don Hecho. And Christian has been really an instrumental part of the Global Chamber since the beginnings. And, and he's always talking about Bacanora, trying to, to, to send the message out. And I said, you know, I, I need to I need to do it for him today. Um, so again, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Enrique, Eric, and everyone else who joined us. We're all in Vancouver. So if you if you have any issues in Canada. With, with the export of, of your tequila or mezcal, reach out to Rob. He's an expert on that. And your mail um, in New York, a custom broker. So definitely someone you need to bear in mind. And and I saw I saw Luis. He was from he left, but he's a new member from Guadalajara. I say Eduardo Gonzalez is an expert in manufacturing in Mexico. Um, Christopher Herring, our executive director in in San Antonio, and Texas. Charles Lay, an expert in technology and doing a lot in Africa. And so sorry if I missed someone. Oh, Gloria Peterson, Gloria, thank you. Gloria is also has been instrumental in, in this type of global dining conversation. And she's our book author's um, leader. So if you're planning to write a book, reach out to, to Gloria. And she's definitely uh, a key contact to have. So, um, and Jacob, of course, Jacob Ditz, he's been, uh, he's a new member. He's a 100% networker. Um, it's someone that really a good match for me and Jacob has been supporting us. And he actually introduced us someone in, in Dallas that has a, a bar slash restaurant. So definitely something that Eric, Sam, you, you, you would want to touch base with. And Mitch, um, thank you for always joining our, our calls with Global Dining as well. And I don't know, Doug left, so I was I was saving some some space for Doug. But I think we can wrap it up now. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good rest of your day, and I will be keeping you posted on the next one. Salud. 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 Salud.